America, the world's most powerful nation, a country whose founding principles make this country so great. Yet we find ourselves in a first world nation where homeless have iPhones, but somehow we're still surrounded by anarchy and crime. It seems unthinkable how dangerous it is, but it's reality, folks, and it's all by design. You see, the Democrats allowed radical left wing groups like Antifa and BLM to take to the streets a political partnership, ginning them up with race baiting rhetoric. Their mission, destroy America, even using popular chants used by radical Islamic terror groups, the perfect partner for the left, recruiting them as the militant arm of the Democrat Party, using these groups to intimidate the public, instilling maximum fear to systemically break down law and order and your will. So the left allowed this reign of terror because it helped them achieve a political end. It rallied Black Lives Matter. It pushed the systemic racism narrative. It intimidated many Americans to accept their approved storyline with the unspoken understanding they'll let you survive. They'll leave you alone if you just get with the program. And now, with the real possibility of a red wave, they need a new crisis, and that crisis is crime. The reframing crime as the GOP's gun violence, or as Gavin Newsom says, a red state murder problem. So now, by disassociating themselves from crime, passing the buck to the GOP, they don't have to do anything about it, while at the same time using these crises to justify gun control, the gun grab. Never let a good crisis go to waste, even if it means creating one. So they'll let crime run rampant like Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner, a Soros-backed DA, by the way, dismissing, get this, 60% of illegal firearm cases. And by doing so, they force the people to live in fear. Mind you, most mass shootings happen in major cities all the time. We report on it every Monday following a violent weekend, Chicago, almost every week. But then, in the wake of a Uvalde school shooting, a rare and unfortunate case, by the way, their answer is to restrict the law-abiding citizens' right to bear arms, not fortifying schools, which are complete soft targets. All of a sudden, they care about gun violence and mass shootings. Yeah. Meanwhile, they allow this in your backyard. This disturbing footage is out of New Orleans. What about them? While you have to whisper amongst your buddies about your next camping trip, what about guns you're bringing to your pra target practice? You have to whisper about that or how to properly transport them. These criminals, meanwhile, are out on the streets parading with illegal firearms and posting it on social media. Again, why would the left allow all this? Because, folks, in the moment of fear and tragedy, they realize the people will beg for something even if it does nothing. We have to try to do something. We have to move the needle when it comes to the gun conversation. We've got to do something to restrict them, and we've got to find the common ground. Until we decide to do something about gun violence, unfortunately, these things are going to continue to occur over and over. I am frankly sick and tired of the death and destruction we continue to see. We need to do something. They had one message for all of us. Do something. Just do something. For God's sake, do something. For God's sake, you do something. So is it really a surprise that while Mayor Adams is partying it up in New York City hotspots, living the life as a celebrity, meanwhile, women are too afraid to use public transportation. Why? Because 7 in 10 New Yorkers are concerned about being a victim of violent crime. And even though a woman with a concealed carry weapon is a great equalizer against any thugs, the left answer is to disarm you not prosecute the criminals. And while shootings dipped in May, they still remain double pre-pandemic levels. The rational observer has no choice but to conclude that Democrats don't actually care about gun violence because by allowing it to run rampant, they can justify gun control. The left's new recruit is the criminal element tasked with raining terror on you so that society begs for gun control, begging for safety and security, even if it means forfeiting your liberty. And so these 10 Republican senators have reportedly sided with the left in a gun control agreement because according to them, something, where'd you hear that before? Something is better than nothing.
Take a good look at them because in this bill, there's an obscure provision incentivizing states to adopt red flag laws. It's the left's easy tactic to empower judges to nullify your Second Amendment right with a stroke of a pen. That pesky thing called due process, yeah, thrown out. Presumption of innocence, yeah, thrown out too. And so an armed agent of the government will come to your house, knock on your door, if you said something that wasn't approved by the Ministry of Truth. And so when they say it's only for those mentally unfit, those who are dangerous, okay. Well, take a look at this White House transcript. Joe Biden at a Beverly Hills fundraiser, fundraiser said a few days ago, and I quote, if you need 30, 40, 60, up to 100 rounds, you're a danger to yourself, man. Is that a red flag also, Joe? It's not government, it's not government's decision. They can't decide how many rounds we're allowed to carry. It's constitutionally protected. Oh, that's a joke, they say, like his joke, Kimmel joke and him joking about imprisoning Republicans. Well, Peter Navarro doesn't think that's funny at all. Extremist groups and particularly uh, white supremacist groups do pose a fundamental threat to our democracy. Okay, so extremists and white supremacist groups are the biggest threat to democracy. What's new, they remind us all the time. Okay, fine. So let's dig a little further, shall we? Biden's Department of Homeland Security, the same one tasked with policing disinformation, remember that? Brands speech and speech they don't approve of as terrorism, as a terrorist threat, specifically the proliferation of false or misleading narratives which sow discord or undermine public trust in U.S. government institutions. Wow. Who decides that? Let me guess. Them. That's a terror threat. So if you dare criticize Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, or believe, as most conservatives and libertarians do, having an inherent distrust of government, that bureaucracy is inefficient and generally incompetent, you can be marked as a terror threat by this administration. Remember when they marked parents as terror threats? They're power hungry, folks. They want control. Do you think that just maybe that would be used as a red flag. Do you think by your political opposition? Of course, yes, they're generally obscure enough to include anything. But folks, this is just the beginning. And as more crime, more mass shootings happen, which they will, because it's the left's new tool to push gun control, they're gonna push it further than red flag laws. You don't believe me? Let's check in with our friendly tyrant up north, Justin Trudeau. This is him back in 2010. The fear in here is that the first step towards registering your guns is, is just the first step towards taking away guns from everyone. That's never going to happen because here in Canada, we have a culture that has that has grown up with guns and it respects the need to, to go out into the wilderness and shoot things from time to time. God, never going to happen, right? The country with a very robust gun culture, just like America. And Trudeau says he's not coming for your guns. Well, this is Trudeau two weeks ago. We're introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. In other words, we're capping the market for handguns. So what happened to we're not coming for your guns? Yeah, it's not working out for Canada right now. But you may say, well, that's up north. It won't happen here, right? I love it. And let me just say what matters is leadership. And you saw leadership at scale, demonstrable leadership at scale when the prime minister had the courage of his convictions and moved efficiently and effectively on the issue of gun safety. And you contrast that to the lack of leadership, the cowards, that continue to dominate the national debate as it relates to gun safety policy. Cowards, cowards, you hear that? That's the governor of the most populous state, California, a Democrat, by the way, who might be their presidential candidate because old Joe can't stay awake past sunset. Gavin Newsom celebrates Trudeau's gun grab. Are you worried yet? Are you paying attention yet? A nine millimeter bullet blows the lung out of the body. So the idea of these high caliber weapons is of, there is simply no rational basis for it in terms of about self-protection, hunting. Did you hear that from a guy who wants to be president to the guy who 
allegedly is president. And there you have it, the president of the United States who swore to uphold the protect and protect the Constitution. He believes there's no rational basis for you to have the most popular handgun, the 9 millimeter, the same weapon that federal government is using is determined as the most effective firearm in stopping threats. It's why police departments across the country use them, but you're not allowed to have one, according to Joe Biden. This is where the Democrats are headed, and they're headed, and they're taking all of us on their road to tyranny with them, because they know having an armed population is a brutal reminder that government's legitimacy, that their moral right to use state power is only lawful when consented to by the people. And history has shown what happens when that safeguard is removed, the consent of the governed is irrelevant, and like any radical leftist, they believe, as, they, as Mao, Mao Zedong did, that political power grows out of the barrel of a gun.